Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. Today we're here to do a big ol' unhaul. This is separate from my Con Marie With Me um, series. I've read a few books. I have DNF'd a few books. And I just don't want to read some of these books. So let's get into it. I've got 11 books that I am ditching from my shelves. Let us dive right in. Well, the first is Daisy Jones and the Six. This is such a beloved book. I don't know why I started with this on book two, where people love this book and might hate me for getting rid of it. Uh, but this book is about a band called Daisy Jones and the Six, and it is about their drama with one another. It's told in a series of interviews, and you meet Daisy, you meet the whole band, and I really liked the structure of it very much. I didn't, I don't know, there was something about it that I didn't buy into. I wasn't super excited about the storyline itself all the time, or... I, and I didn't feel very close to the characters a lot of the time. It was just something about it that just didn't do it for me. Um, I loved The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is also interview format. So it's not the interview format that I have a problem with. Same author. Um, I just didn't work for me the same way that the others did. That said, I listened to it on audio and I have to say the audio was wonderful. It's a cast of characters, a whole bunch of them, and um, it was really well done. So if you are looking to read this, I do recommend the audio format. But yeah, it just didn't, didn't quite do it for me. So I'm going to let that go. A book that I DNF'd, I tried to read so bad. I tried so hard. It's Growing Things by Paul Tremblay. You know me, and you know how much I love Paul Tremblay. He is my favorite horror author. But this is a series of short stories. And I have to say, I was kind of bored. I think I got halfway through, or even further than halfway through. And there was nothing about this book that I wanted to pick up. I just kept putting it down and picking up other things. And every time I thought, oh, I should pick that up again, it felt like a chore. And I don't know, don't take it from me because there are a lot of people on booktube who really loved this book. Some people are saying it's their favorite book of the year. So there's that, but it just was not for me. Probably the biggest shock of the year, if I'm being honest, probably the biggest shock. Um, this book I'm getting rid of only because I found a nicer, fancier copy. And it's The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. This is like a vampire story. I don't really know what to make of the story. Um, but late one night, she's ex this woman is exploring her father's library. And she finds this ancient book and a cachet of yellowing letters addressed to my dear and unfortunate successor. And she dives into her father's past. And it sounds wonderful. I don't know why I haven't read this yet. Um, probably because of the, I don't know, this book is like super yellowed. I think it's waterlogged in the back. No wonder I didn't pick it up. But I have a new shiny copy now. So there's that. I'm also parting ways with the death of Mrs. Westaway. Not because I didn't enjoy it. I really did. But when I went into this book, I thought thriller, and it turned out to be more of a mystery. Um, this is about a woman who is doing very poorly in her life. She um, has a bunch of people after her for money and like loan sharks. And she mysteriously gets this letter in the mail saying your grandmother is bequeathing all sorts of money to you. So you have to come to her funeral and to this house where she lived and you'll collect. And she's like, that's not my grandmother. Like, there's no way that's my grandmother. But I'm doing badly in life financially. Maybe I can just pretend that it's my grandmother and it will be fine. So she goes and she soon regrets it. Um, but yes, much more mystery than thriller if I went into this thinking it was purely a mystery. 
maybe I would have liked it more. Um, good book, just it was a three star for me. So it goes. That's the rule for my shelves. They have to be like four star and above to stay on my shelves. Otherwise, they got to go. Um, another one is Silka's Journey. Barry brought this home to me soon after Nora was born. It was so sweet because it is kind of my story. Um, my kind of story that I would like. Um, this is a World War II book based on a true story, which is fascinating. Um, also written by the author of The Tattooist of Auschwitz, which is such a popular book. And this is about uh, a young woman who goes to Auschwitz and she survives. But she survives because there's this lieutenant um, in the German army who takes a liking to her in a horrific way. He rapes her repeatedly. And, um, but because of this fondness, let's say, that he has for her, she stays in like better quarters um, in Auschwitz and she survives. Unfortunately, when they are um, freed, a bunch of prisoners um, in Auschwitz basically say, you know, she was, you know, cahooting with the Germans and she is sent to um, an internment camp or a work camp in Siberia and she deals with horrific events there. The story of this is fascinating and very sad that it's a true story and I flipped through this so fast. I read this so fast, but it felt like the author spent so much more time on the history and research of it than on building characters that were believable. I struggled with that. And so because of that, it ended up being a three star for me. Um, so I'm going to get rid of that. Here's a book I really hated and I read the whole damn thing and I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Hex. This has such a good premise and I've been wanting to read it forever. This is about a, a little town where there is this witch that haunts the town, like literally will like show up in your living room and watch you have supper, except she's blind. And I think she was blinded. And um, she is this secret that the town harbors and they don't want anyone else to come to the town because essentially if you move to the town, you can never leave. Like if you try to go on a little vacation, you will feel like killing yourself. So you really can't leave. And of course they don't want that for anyone. Um, this was not scary to me. It was kind of, I don't know, cheesy. It felt cheesy to me and I didn't like it at all. I would not recommend it, unfortunately. This is uh, translated though from, I don't know what language. Uh, anyway, it was translated and maybe it's the translation that was the problem. A couple of um, you guys were saying that, that the, the original is actually really good, but it just really didn't work for me. Next is Severance by Ling Ma. This was a DNF for me. This is a post-apocalyptic story about a world in which um, there's this fever, I think, um, Shen fever that sweeps New York and we meet someone who survived. And it's about her and the survivors. And I was bored reading this. <laughs> like I was so bored. It's very short, like relatively short. 283 pages and I couldn't get through it all. So unfortunately, this one is going. I just, how do you bore someone with apocalypse? How does that happen? I don't know, but she succeeded. Another apocalyptic kind of book is The Last by Hannah Jameson. I enjoyed this. I wanted to enjoy it a lot more than I did and it started out so good. This is about a world in which um, bombs go off all over the world. Like New York is gone, France is gone, like all of these countries are bombed. There's nuclear war. And this man survives in Switzerland. They, he's gone to this conference for work and um, 
while he's there, everything goes down. He's staying at this hotel and he survives. And it's about the people at the hotel. Um, unfortunately, a dead body is found at the hotel soon after all of the stuff has gone down. And more and more dead bodies keep showing up and they have to figure out who the murderer is in the hotel. And it sounds so much like so much fun. I, I liked so much of it. But as it went on, it just kind of fell apart for me. I felt that the ending was super hurried and that just didn't work for me. So this one is unfortunately leaving my shelves as well. Not bad, but just not, not bookshelf material for me. And the last three are books that I have not read and have decided not to. Uh, first is Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pinborough. I read Behind Her Eyes a couple of years ago and it was the worst book that I had read that year. I think that year I had read like 90 something books. So that's saying something. And I just don't want to read anything by Sarah Pinborough because I was so angry with her at the end of Behind Her Eyes. I literally was angry at her. Like I could have thrown that book across the room and so I don't want to read this, unfortunately, even though I really like this cover. Pretty, right? That's going. I'm also unfortunately getting rid of Endurance by Scott Kelly. Scott Kelly is a um, an astronaut and it's about his experience in space, which sounds really cool, but I don't know if I want to read an entire book about that. Um, so I think I think there's like a mini series with him on Netflix, so I'm gonna watch that instead. Uh, I feel guilty about that one. Um, and the last one is just something that I don't think I can read, and it's The Real Lolita. This is The Kidnapping of Sally Horner and the novel that scandalized the world. So this is the true story um, of Sally Horner that Lolita is apparently based on. Um, I like true crime. This I think will really be hard for me and I just, of all the true crime that I have on my shelves, this is probably the last one that I'd want to pick up. That said, it might be amazing. So those are all of the books that I am unhauling. I am freeing them from my shelves. They will go to many good homes. Like there's Daisy Jones and the Six. Sometimes when I'm unhauling things and I know they're like really popular books, I feel like I'm giving a little gift to people because so many people love that book. Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments below if you have unhauled anything over the last um, little while that has felt really good for you and what that was. I'd love to know and I will talk with you soon. Bye guys.